The stately house has overlooked Columbia Avenue for a century and a half. And while the neighboring Carter House has long been linked with the historic Battle of Franklin, J.T. Thompson is now bringing the Lotes House's intriguing story to light. My very first job when I was 15 that I got paid for was I was a tour guide at the Carter House across the street and I fell in love with the Battle of Franklin. And uh, to be able to do this in Franklin is, is a dream come true for, for me. Johann Albert Lotz, he was a German immigrant and by trade he was a, a master carpenter. And basically in 1855 bought five acres of property from Mr. Carter, 110 steps away across Columbia Avenue. Mr. Lotz was not a slave owner. He worked for three years to build this house himself creating not only his home, but a three-dimensional resume of his woodworking and carpentry skills. When you walk around the house and all the decorations above all the windows, those were all examples of the carving he could do. Uh, when you walk through the house, the newel post downstairs and uh, the black walnut wraparound staircase, these were all examples of his work. And he was really, besides being a master craftsman, he was also a great early marketing person because he would use these things and bring potential clients to his house to see the three different mantles, to see the newel post, to see the carving on the outside. And he would say, well, I can do this for you at your home. JT has worked closely with his mother, Sue Thompson, to set the stage with fabulous period antiques and fine arts that they have selectively collected over the years. JT comes by his love of history naturally. It's a real treat to get to work with my mother. She's an encyclopedia. And working with her for the last seven years on the, on the collection and growing up with her, she's taught me so much. We begin our tour in the keeping room, used on three principal occasions by an antebellum family, weddings, funerals, and when important visitors came to call. A portrait of poet Robert Burns hangs over the fireplace. Here in the center of the room, we have three excellent examples of John Henry Belter furniture. The parlor table is in the center, flanked by two uh, marvelous chairs. These chairs have twins in the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. In the dining room, a banquet table is set with an old Paris dining service, from which Presidents Polk, Pierce, and Buchanan all once dined. Ms. Thompson pointed out that all the mirrors, crystal, and gilded frames not only served a decorative purpose, but reflected light throughout the room a precious resource before the modern convenience of electric lights. This is the master bedroom. Next to the bed is a marvelous and interesting piece. Makes you appreciate running water because uh, this is the master uh, toilet and it even has the little place to put your foot. Well, it's certainly conveniently located. <laughs> conveniently located. This is Matilda's bedroom, and we wanted the essence of a, of a six-year-old little girl in here. Matilda had just turned six the day before the horrific Battle of Franklin began. Mr. Lotes took his family to seek refuge in the solid brick basement of his neighbor, Mr. Carter. The next morning found the Lotes family unharmed, but their home had been heavily damaged. A cannonball crashed through the roof, an upstairs bedroom, and then came to land on the first floor. The charred spot is still visible, as well as the repairs Mr. Lotes made to the floor above. With 10,000 casualties from the five-hour battle, any building left standing served as a hospital. A replica hospital flag hangs from the second-story balcony. Part of the museum is highlighting some of the, the relics from the, the Battle of Franklin, some of the things I've collected from a child all the way up. And this particular piece is unique. It's a Union drum that was actually picked up off the battlefield in Franklin. It was made in New York in 1863. Very touching a Union belt buckle and a Confederate belt buckle. Uh, and the Confederate buckle is unusual because it actually has a, a mini ball embedded into it. And it likely saved the soldiers alive at the time when he was, was hit by that. There are so many stories to share about the Lotes family and the turbulent times in which they lived. JT and Sue have spent their lives studying and learning about those times. 
The artifacts and knowledge they have collected are a gift from the past. But with that, they believe, comes the responsibility to usher it all into the future. We want the house to be here for now, but also many, many, many years down the road. So that the house is protected, the collection is protected, but, but more importantly, that people, school children, and people with an interest can come here and learn. Tennessee Civil War 150 is made possible in part by Tennessee Department of Education, Tennessee Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission, and Tennessee Civil War National Heritage Area.